Welcome to the January 31st meeting of the Murfreesboro City Council. Uh, Councilman Rick Lalance has our prayer and our pledge. All right, if you'll bow with me. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all the blessings that we have in our lives. Thank you for this city and all the people who work so hard to, to make it uh, happen here. Lord, we hope that you'll be with us tonight in our words and our actions. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. All right. I want to apologize. We're running just a little late. We had a community meeting with uh, at the police headquarters, so we had a good turnout. And ran a little late. Um, all right. We'll go into our consent agenda. You have 12 items that are on your consent agenda. I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, you'll please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into whole business. You have Ordinance 19001, uh, second and final reading on the hotel motel occupancy tax increase. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wrightville, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Abstain. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll move into, uh, excuse me, uh, Ordinance 18 OZ 67, second and final reading to rezone approximately 3.65 acres located along Halls Hill Pike, CLRM 16 CF. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wrightville, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Ordinance 18 OZ 57, second and final reading, amending PRD for approximately 33.3 .3 acres in General's Landing PRD along West Thompson Lane. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Ordinance 18069, second and final reading amendment pertaining to site plan review authority. <laughs> second. Motion is second. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Now we have a plan of services annexation and zoning for approximately 39.9 .9 acres located along Manson Court and Manson Pike, Shelton Grove, PUD. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. I want to point out that the annexation and plan of services were actually uh, approved um, contingent upon the rezoning, so we would need to move on to item uh, C, which I believe is the rezoning ordinance. Okay, now this will be first reading on ordinance 18 OZ 56. Thank you. Uh, back on November 1st, uh, 2018, the City Council held a public hearing for annexation and rezoning <clears throat> of approximately 39.9 .9 acres located along Manson Pike and Manson Court. The annexation was approved, but it is contingent upon the rezoning uh, being approved. At the November 1st meeting, the council had concerns with several aspects of the plan that was presented. Uh, the first concern was the proposed density increase from 118 dwelling units or 4.25 units per acre to 213 dwelling units or 5.67 units per acre. The density request today is the same as it was uh, in November. However, the applicant has increased the amenity package uh, by adding a swimming pool to the development. The second concern was the proposed solid waste management plan. The applicant now proposes city pickup for the single family detached units and private pickup uh, for the townhouse units. The third concern related to parking for the townhouse portion of the development. Uh, the plan presented in November showed optional garages. The applicant now proposes shifting from a garage or no garage option uh, to a one car or two car garage option. 
Um, I do want to point out that the applicant does propose using some on-street parking for the swimming pool that I mentioned earlier. And if the council is okay with this, then the applicant would need to show this exception in the pattern book for the second reading. Uh, no public hearing is necessary for this item as one has already been held. Staff can answer any questions that you may have. And who's here representing? Uh, Matt Taylor from SEC is here representing uh, the applicant and can talk more about this request as well. Any questions for the applicant? <clears throat> if there's no questions or comments, I move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we're moving to new business. Uh, certificate of Compliance Renewal, Gautam Patel 96 Liquor and Wine, located at 2019A Las Casas Pike. Mayor, this is a renewal of an existing location. They are required by the state to do this every two years. This application is in order and we do recommend approval. Okay, any questions? So moved. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll now move to the property exchange agreement for the extension of West Northfield Boulevard. Mayor, I had anticipated that Mr. Griffith was going to present that tonight. I don't see him here. Chris is um, still at the community meeting talking about traffic calming. Uh, I don't have the file with me, but I think I generally know what All this right, is let's, about, let's, and I'd be happy uh, let's to. Let's move that to the bottom of the agenda. That'd be fine. And hopefully he'll be back. Chris uh, loves being at the bottom of the agenda. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, we may could just make sure. Is Kenya doing the agendas now? Kenya is doing the agenda. <laughs> there we go. If you're late. It, it pays to go to extra meetings. Right? That's right. That's right. All right. So we'll move uh, to um, ordinance amendment pertaining to multifamily residential uses in the MU zoning district 2008-808. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this amendment is to ensure that projects in MU zoned properties include a mix of land uses. Um, as the gateway continues to develop, we anticipate that multifamily residential will be one of the leading proposed land uses on MU zoned property. And while multifamily residential can certainly be a component of a mixed use project, it should not be the only component um, of a mixed use project, or at least I don't think that's the way that the uh, MU district was designed. Uh, with this zoning ordinance amendment, staff proposes establishing ratios for the portion of an MU zone property that can be set aside for multifamily residential purposes. For developments consisting of 10 or more acres, no more than 25% of the developable land area could be designated for multifamily. For developments consisting of fewer than 10 acres, no more than 50% uh, could be designated for multifamily. Developable, developable, it's a tough word, land area is defined uh, within this amendment as, as any land not constrained by natural resources, um, historically significant areas, or overhead or underground transmission lines or easements. The Planning Commission reviewed this item on December 5th and voted uh, unanimously to send it forward to you with a favorable recommendation. Uh, staff can answer any questions that you may have. Don, what uh, this will prevent from happening would be somebody buying a 10-acre piece of property and developing half of it as multifamily and then selling off the other half of the property and then that person coming to us and saying, I want to develop half my property multifamily and half of it uh, retail. Yes. that In turn, creating 75% of it multifamily. This will eliminate that from happening, correct? That is exactly one of the in intents of this, is to, is, is to cap uh, an area. And in the gateway, we try to get master plans for large tracts. And so it would be sticking with a master plan. And regardless of um, if the land is parceled off at some later time, 
you would still be committed to a, to a master plan at, at which some entitlement would have been would have been granted. Do we do we have some? And I, uh, do, this may not be something that you know offhand, but do we have already tracks or parcels, however you want to break it down, that had master plans in the past where we could already sort of apply this? I'm going to give you an example, um, if that's okay. The, um, if you look on your screen, you'll see this Robert Rose Village West um, development. That's, that's one in particular. Th those two highlighted areas along with the, the former Peter D's restaurant and then the apartment complex below, all of this was, was master planned as one, um, as one thing. And um, if, if this ordinance were applied to that piece of property, the apartment complex that is there would consume the 50%. Yeah. Um, and so it, it would not allow for then for those remaining parcels uh, that are shown there to be developed as multifamily. Yeah. Um, this particular applicant or, or this particular property owner does have some interest in developing those um, as, as multifamily. And, and those, that's a good example of, of what Councilman Smotherman mentioned a minute ago, where there was originally one developer um, for that entire property, but those, uh, that's been parceled off now, and so you have totally different owners um, of, of those two parcels that are highlighted. And I think what it does, you know, the, the other example is, if you break, in, in my opinion, if you break it into two sections, if you go from Memorial to Thompson Lane, um, that predominantly has turned out medical and office space. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an argument there to be able to have some multifamily in that area because what we continually hear is you, you need to have some rooftops around recruiting jobs into that area. But then at the same time from Thompson Lane to 24, you know, that area has predominantly turned out all retail and multifamily, very few office space and what you would say jobs in that area is corporate what we would say corporate jobs or other jobs besides hospitality and, and, so retail. and retail so um, you know the example I like to use is Henley Station even though the mixed-use zoning they've got a three or four thousand square foot restaurant <coughs> and four hundred and four hundred units that's not really mixed use I mean that's that's not so I hope this will allow that to be able to fix some of that that that's what the intention is and I, I know that there's some interest in having us um, look at some some perhaps distance issues and and how close um, or, or how these are aggregating together so many of these multifamily complexes and um, we'll be happy to do that we would we would point out that I think the ordinance that we put before you could be a sort of a stopgap measure to as we work on that, or if, if you want to delay this and roll this into um, some future study, we'll be happy to, to do that as well. Um, we, we just want to make sure that, that we're providing to the council what it is that, that you would like for us to do. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, I'm, if there, anybody else have any questions on it? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Actually, Mayor McFarland. I am just messed up on that. We need to have a public hearing on this. <laughs> and we did not have a public hearing on that. Right, so right. we need to uh, back up. <laughs> have a redo. We're going to have a public hearing on this. Uh, so everyone forget the vote that you just had. Uh, <laughs> I said I. Yeah. Anyway. So uh, we, we're going to have a public hearing. If you're wishing to speak for or against uh, any of the public hearings that we have coming up, please come to the podium, state your name and address. If you'll direct all questions to the council, we'll get those addressed at the end of the council. If you're representing an individual, it's three minutes. If you're representing a group, uh, you'll get five minutes. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. <clears throat> All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, and now we'll vote on Ordinance 18076. Ms. Wright, I think you have a motion and a second. Vice Mayor Skills Harris? Aye. Mr. LaLance? Aye. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Shacklett? Aye. Mr. Sutherman? <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mayor McFarland? Aye. All right, we'll move into resolutions. We'll adopt resolution, look to adopt resolution 19R2, industrial local limits and plant protection criteria for water resources.
Mr. Gore, we'll move you to the end of the agenda, and we'll now. Uh, Sorry about that. I was uh, distracted. Excuse me. Facebooking. I was wondering. If there, I didn't know if there needed to be a public hearing before this. Um, um, Touche, baby. So, so the general uh, the general pretreatment regulations require that each uh, publicly owned treatment works that is required to develop an approved pretreatment system. Uh, to also develop and enforce local limits on certain pollutants to protect against pass-through or interference which may be caused by industrial discharges to the uh, treatment uh, facilities. What you have before you today is a resolution adopting the plant protection criteria and the local industrial user limits to uh, accomplish that which is to again uh, protect pass-through or interference with the plant. So we would recommend your approval. No comments. I move for approval. Second. Motion second. Ms. Wright for call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gore. All right, we'll uh, look at adopting resolution 19R4, the incurrence of general obligation and indebtedness of 58 million. This is from administration. Um, Mayor and council, um, you'll recall over uh, the last several months, we've had a couple of workshops about our uh, 2019 capital improvement program. Um, that resulted in a list of projects that we uh, wanted to fund through debt this year. Um, the list is attached to the, uh, the agenda. Um, the uh, debt issuance is at um, 58 million, as I said, and this is the initial resolution, the first step in the process of being able to issue that debt. So, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any answer any questions. And and um, um, Mrs. Tucker's here, and she can assist if we need. Is this what we already have uh, budgeted in our CIP? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. This is what we went over in the workshop, right? It is. Any questions? If there aren't any, I'll move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Ms. Schreiber, you'll please call the roll. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into land use matters. Uh, we need to look at amending zoning in the Sunset Ridge PRD along Sunray Drive uh, planning. Mr. Malama. Good evening, Mayor McFarland and members of council. Our next item tonight is a public hearing in the Sunset Ridge PRD. Uh, Sunset Ridge was approved by the city council back in 2004. A different developer was the original applicant. Uh, Mr. Lloyd has since uh, taken over as the developer of Sunset Ridge. Um, Sunset Ridge is a, is a uh, residential community with a number of different residential components to it, including um, single-family attached townhomes, single-family zero lot line homes, and traditional single-family detached homes. Uh, Mr. Lloyd is in the very last section of the single-family detached homes, um, and there are three lots on Sunray Drive, and you'll see those are the three lots that I've circled right there that have the hatch color or the, the hatch pattern. Um, those three lots require what, um, what the original pattern book in 2004 called an internal access garage. That's what we would more commonly call a courtyard style garage uh, where it's kind of uh, a snout house, if you will, but instead of a front entry snout house, it's kind of a side entry snout house. These are, um, these are, uh, uh, relatively small lots. They're not very conducive to the courtyard style garages. Uh, Mr. Lloyd is requesting that these three lots, um, that the, the PRD be amended so that these three lots uh, be allowed to have the standard front entry style garages. The majority of the lots in the subdivision have standard front entry style garages. Um, these are the last three of just a handful of lots that had that requirement for the courtyard style garage. Um, we told Mr. Lloyd that this was just slightly above the threshold of what we could approve administratively and that he would have to make application for an amendment to the PRD. Um, 
as this was a requirement of the original PRD. Uh, the Planning Commission considered this matter uh, and unanimously voted to recommend its approval after holding a public hearing. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions regarding this request um, before or after the public hearing. All other requirements pertaining to these lots will remain the same. The only request is with, res with, re with respect to the garage style. Um, Mr. Lloyd is also in attendance if you have any questions for him. Thank you. All right, we'll need to conduct a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against uh, this PRD change, please come to the podium. <coughs> Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider on first reading ordinance 18 OZ 73. <coughs> Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please Ask call the roll. Yes. yes. Sorry, buddy. Now, Mr. Lloyd, bands, these are going to be facing the roadway. Are we comfortable that these are going to be some of those real pretty carriage style doors or something like that? Yes, sir. They will be very pretty uh, carriage style doors, yes. And also, these uh, are a little different than the other ones that we build. They have 65% of hard surface or brick or uh, hardy plank on them. So, it should look pretty good. We're about to wrap this place up, put the last uh, bit of topper on it, and uh, project done. Good deal. We got you on record saying that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We're now going to look at rezoning approximately 18.7 acres, uh, commercial fringe located along Veterans Parkway. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Our next public hearing is a request to rezone property located along uh, Veterans Parkway and uh, Kingdom Drive. Um, and there are two separate requests rolled into one. Um, you'll notice that the area colored in blue is zoned commercial local, and the area colored in purple is zoned RS-15. So really uh, what spurred this request was the area colored in purple. Um, Mr. Swanson came to us and these two parcels that he owns on the west side of Veterans Parkway um, are zoned RS-15, have relatively little utility as RS-15 parcels um, because they do front on a, on a five-lane major arterial. And so he requested to rezone those to commercial fringe. Um, when we met with him about that, we, um, we told him that it would be our preference as staff for him to go ahead and request rezoning for the area zoned commercial local as well. Um, this was zoned commercial local back in 2013 when it was annexed to the city. Since then, we've kind of, you know, while commercial local is a viable zoning district and it's still, it's still an active zoning district, it's not something that we encourage um, people to rezone property to. Uh, commercial Fringe is, offers uh, many of the same uh, uh, protections to, uh, to neighbors, but even, it offers even more protections um, to neighbors as well that the commercial local zone does not. So we felt, especially on a five-lane highway, the commercial fringe zone would be more appropriate than the commercial local zone. Uh, in the surrounding area, uh, there is an RM16 zone property to the north, which is undeveloped. Um, there are some single-family homes on the east side of Veterans Parkway, just to the north. Um, and uh, of course, the overall Creek Elementary School is also uh, uh, in the vicinity as well, and it is zoned RS15. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on this matter and unanimously voted to recommend its approval uh, with respect to the uh, Murfreesboro 2035 future land use map uh, the, uh, for the property that's currently zoned commercial local. The future land use map show, recommends a neighborhood commercial land use. The CF zone that they are requesting would generally be consistent with that. On the opposite side of uh, Veterans Parkway, here, which would be the, the west side of Veterans Parkway, the property that's currently zoned RS-15. The future land use map recommends suburban residential. Um, however, the applicant has requested the rezoning to commercial fringe, and it would be up to the council to consider whether or not this would be an appropriate instance to deviate from the recommendation of the uh, commercial or of the, uh, of the uh, comprehensive plan. I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Joe Swanson is in, in attendance 
uh, representing the application if you have any questions for him. All right, we'll need to conduct a public hearing on this. Um, anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Good evening, Mayor McFarland, Council, staff, Joe Swanson, Jr., 1188 Park Avenue. Just a couple of items I'd like to bring up. This particular piece of property, if you're familiar with it, has a CUD tank behind it, a water tank, water tower, um, not conducive for residential. Also, the deepest portion of these two lots is 520 feet deep. There's a 60 foot rise from the front of the lot to the rear of the lot. So if I can kind of help you get a vision of that, it, as a home builder, I would have three blocks on one side and up to 10 on the other side to balance a 40 foot wide house. Since the Planning Commission, I wanted to bring this up, since Planning Commission, the bridge has opened along uh, down Kingdom Drive, which intersects the eastern from basically Rucker Lane all the way through to Veterans now. So Kingdom Drive dead ends, as you, as you stop there at Veterans, you're looking at this piece of property across the five lane. Uh, the, uh, since the public hearing, or yeah, since the public hearing at City at Planning Commission, we have acquired our land disturbance permit for the area next to the bridge. You kind of held off till the bridge got completed. We'll be putting a detention pond in there to handle most of, well, all of the commercial local on the east side of Veterans. If you have any questions, I'll be available. Thank you. <coughs> any other one? Any, anyone else wishing to speak for or against? All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and consider this on passage. If there are no comments, I move for approval. I think uh, I'm gonna quote uh, Doug Young on this one. I don't think that property that's currently RS is where I'd build my dream home. And uh, I, th I think this change to commercial fringe on that particular property, considering all the lights and everything coming up Kingdom Ridge will be aimed at it. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to deviate from what the original plan was and uh, have something that uh, uh, is much more functional. I'll second Madeline's motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. We'll now look at rezoning approximately 1.96 acres uh, PRD located along Veterans Parkway. Mr. Bonley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Board up. It was a request at the Planning Commission meeting for a materials board, and so the applicant did provide that, and so I wanted you to have that uh, available to you. This property is actually very near in proximity to our last request. It is actually just to the north of the property that we just considered uh, for rezoning from CL to CF on the east side of Veterans Parkway. This is a 1.96 acre parcel that uh, Swanson Development acquired uh, from Fellowship Bible Church. It used to be a part of the Fellowship Bible Church tract. Um, and the church is actually located here. The area directly to the east of the area colored in purple is zoned RM16. Has been zoned RM16 for several years now. Uh, Mr. Swanson would like to develop this 1.96 acres in tandem with the RM16 um, so that it would be a part of the apartment complex that would be developed on the RM16 track. Uh, the, uh, uh, the request to PRD is simply because the request to zone it to RM16, uh, which would be the zoning district that the property to the east is already zoned, is no longer an option. Um, we have uh, built into our zoning ordinance now that there can be no requests to RM12 or RM16. So we told him that if he wanted to make this a part of the apartment complex that is proposed to be built on the larger RM16 tract, that it would be need, that it would need to be zoned uh, PRD. Um, so what they have proposed to do is to not increase the overall density that would be allowed on the RM16 tract, uh, but they, their intent for rezoning this to PRD is, is really twofold. Uh, one, they would like to build a clubhouse for the apartment complex on this purple tract. And they would also like access onto Veterans Parkway. 
Right now, the RM16 tract uh, has access to Otter Trail directly across the street from uh, Overall Creek Elementary School. And I've got an aerial photograph here, Mr. LaLance. Um, hmm. We've started putting these in the packet now. I was already complaining about I can't zoom out far enough. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you win some, you lose some, I guess. I don't know. Sorry uh, for it. This just can't yeah, play. No, I was just, just can't play I'm some people. We tried. We tried. <laughs> um, Where's Franklin Road? We'll try to make it interactive next time. I'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> it's good. Thank you so much. So you see the school is right here. The RM16 tract has access to Otter Trail and Truth Way right here. And what their intent here is to give the proposed apartment complex access back onto Veterans Parkway so that not all the traffic has to dump out right across from the school. That's good. And this would also allow for the, uh, for the amenity center to be on this lot. As I stated, they're not looking to increase the number of units that they already have a zoning entitlement for on the RM16 track, uh, simply looking to gain access and a place for the amenity center um, uh, close to Veterans Parkway. Planning Commission considered this um, and voted unanimously to recommend approval to the City Council. Uh, the Planning Commission did make, uh, did make its recommendation of approval contingent upon the applicant providing the materials board, which he has uh, submitted, as well as color elevations in the, uh, in the pattern book. And Mr. Kevin Gunther with Reagan Smith will be uh, up momentarily to give you a brief presentation, and he will go over those color elevations for the clubhouse that the Planning Commission uh, requested. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing, and I'd like to invite Mr. Gunther up for a brief presentation on his pattern book. Thank you, Mr. Golomi. Uh, good evening, Mayor McFarland and Council Members. Uh, Kevin Gunther with Reagan Smith. It's a pleasure to be here tonight to present this rezoning request. I think the staff did a good job highlighting a couple important issues. Um, one certainly being that we will not be increasing any of the units or the acreage of the RM16 parcel that's to the east of us. If you can see that brown colored uh, parcel right there. And uh, so this is really providing a good front door, uh, we think, to that proposed apartment complex. and. In doing so, it's going to eliminate a lot of the traffic that would be coming back. No, I shouldn't say eliminate, but reduce traffic that would be going back towards the elementary school. So here you have the colored version of this plan is showing where the clubhouse is. As I mentioned, we think this is a good front door off of Veterans Parkway. Uh, we have provided uh, some good space from Veterans Parkway and landscape buffers on each side of the proposed clubhouse to uh, buffer from the adjoining residential. This is an enlargement of that same area. As you can see, there'll be some upscale amenities proposed with the clubhouse, a pool, uh, a putting green, and this is very much done in an architectural style that feels residential. Uh, there'll be large front porches that wrap the front of the, of the clubhouse. Uh, as had been mentioned, we wanted to give you a sense of what that architecture will be. That first floor is proposed in brick, and we go to a cementitious board siding on the second floor. Uh, that's a simulated wood door, uh, forest green trim on the, on the windows, and we think it's you know, going to feel very much like a residential character building. So part of what we're suggesting is certainly that Another advantage of this being a PRD is that there's going to be a commitment of certain quality of the architecture, the layout, the landscape buffers, and that is going to be something that will ensure that quality um, with the apartment complex as the apartment complex is already zoned for its appropriate RM16. Uh, Mr. Swanson is here as well. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to take those questions. questions 
this is obviously gated up there by the clubhouse and it appears to be gated on the back side so there won't be any through traffic that would be coming from the school just to get over to veterans parkway coming through this area would there that's correct All right, we'll need to conduct a public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Good evening, Council and Mayor McFarland. Um, my husband and I live at the property. North, just north. We, borders. We own this property right here. Mm -hmm. And we're also here, we have a handwritten letter from our neighbors that are on the absolute other side of the property. Wait, can you give us your name and address, please? Oh, sure. Monique and Ricky Pig, and our address is 4150 Veterans Parkway. Okay, go ahead. Okay, our concern is the layout that they have there. It's going to put a parking lot right in our yard, practically. Parking lot. And then that. Uh, the clubhouse itself is going to be built right beside my barn. I mean, from How here to you. How many feet? From here to you. Oh, less than that, probably. Beside my barn. And there's, and only, there's going to be a pool behind it. There's only two homes there. Yeah. And they want to put a business, yeah. literally, in between our houses. Yeah. There's only two homes on the whole block, yeah. my house and our neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. They're and, going to put that right between our houses. And we just. I mean, and you were concerned while we go about it. The lights coming up that road and shining on that property, oh my God. all the you know. Anytime anybody goes in and out there in that parking lot, right, it's going to be right beside our house. It's going, the lights are going to be flashing all over our house, you know, all that. And it just we're just disrupts in, the, you know, everything as far as we're concerned. And it's single it's family homes. homes is what's That's supposed what to be it's there. zoned for right now, single family home. And we just don't think that it's fair yeah. that a company can come put something in for their mm -hmm. business right in between our two houses mm -hmm. and we're just we're and there's a giant sinkhole right in the middle of that property they're talking about all the water from right. off our, our property, property and goes. really the, the property and behind it right. and everything drains right into that now i don't know what you're going to do about that but it's going i think it's going to cause us a problem we took pictures of the huge mm -hmm. sinkhole mm -hmm. i don't know if it was right or wrong of us to go mm -hmm. on their property but we didn't really have to because it's right there mm -hmm. it's huge so we have like what 15 pictures of the huge mm -hmm. sinkhole and then the letter because our neighbor couldn't make it tonight she apologized this for property is, is probably between 150 and 200 feet wide that's as wide as the property is but it's and, right at and it's right, right between our houses and is it fair that they can just change from a neighborhood home and put a business kind of thing right in between two houses I don't know if that's we just don't want it and okay. we do whatever we can to say no with the pool right there next to it it's just going to be constant noise and yeah. aggravation you know okay. they've got a big big area of property there can they not put your clubhouse on the other side maybe over next to the to the commercial part of their you know property it's just very extremely it will be very disruptive yeah it's right at our property line and it's supposed to be houses and i just wish it would just stay that way okay all right thank you very much that's mm -hmm. it what about the name the letter from the other neighbor who totally feels the same sure do? yeah if you would give that to miss wright that would be great did you guys go to the uh, planning commission meeting as well pardon me did you go to the planning commission meeting where did we did she not planning commission? No, no we but were, I think she did. We were out of the country at that time. We didn't. We didn't. Maybe the other neighbor might have. Yes, she did, and mm -hmm. she wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. for, we we were out of the country, but she was able to voice her disapproval. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against, Mr. Swanson? Joe Swanson, 1188 Park. Um, a couple of planning directors ago. Uh, when this happened in 2013, we were just coming out of the recession, and that uh, planning director was somewhat influential, I guess, in suggesting pretty strongly or firmly that we needed to try and do all that we could to keep the traffic away from the school site. And in addition to that, on the plat when it was signed, this property has no sewer, and the sewer needs to come from the school side to get to it. 
um, another reason to incorporate this parcel into uh, the RM16. Of course, we went through the, the zoning change with the PRD and RM properties. Uh, had, had I been on my game, I guess I would have asked to zone this some time ago when I realized that uh, we were going to go through that, but I did not. It's unfortunate. Uh, I'll be available for any questions if you have any. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against? All right, we'll close the public hearing. Can I ask questions to the people who came up? Sure. Mr. Swanson? Yes, sir. Um, and I, I'm just, this is just kind of curiosity, something I'm trying to figure out while I'm trying to pull up my map here, too. Um, how long have you owned the, the two acres that we're talking about? Is it? Since uh, probably 12 or 13. Yeah, 12 or 13. I brought sewer to the church, and we swapped that to get sewer to the church when I built Jack Burns. Right, just based on something that you said earlier, were the houses that are, is, is there a house north of you and south of you? Yes. One of them being yes. the folks who came over And were they there when you bought the property? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mr. Ives, the, the pig family, is this, this house, I can't remember the family. Didn't we buy this house or, who did, or 4150 to the city on this house? I believe that this is the house, uh, the house to the north of this of the proposed uh, clubhouse. I believe that that's the, a house that the city acquired uh, in conjunction with the right of way for veterans and then after a, a year or so later sold it. And I think, I believe these folks are the folks that bought it uh, from from the city. Okay, because I remember I thought there was like some septic or issues if I remember or there was. The reason we bought the property is because uh, our road destroyed the only field line of soils availability for the for their septic. And I believe that by the time they moved in, they uh, had a, a two inch uh, tight line force main installed from okay. veterans uh, from 96, I think, down to their property. The, the, the cost of standard sewer running down to that property <clears throat> would have been prohibitive for one house, uh, but they were able to design a, uh, a, for, uh, a small force main that, that made it, uh, uh, made it <clears throat> economically feasible for them then to buy the house and move into it. Okay. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, we, that used to be the, the owner of the serpents. Uh, Mr. Anthony, or Mr. Blomley, I'm sorry. Um, you, do, do you want to talk about, uh, there was a question about buffering um, drainage and lighting. Can you address those for us? Sure, sure. Um, our standard buffer that is in between uh, single family uses and multifamily uses is a type D buffer. It's our second most stringent buffer. It's a 15 foot wide landscape buffer uh, with a combination of evergreen trees and shrubs. Um, so what is what is represented on the um, plan that Mr. Gunther provided? Uh, it's labeled as type D buffer, but our, you know, of course, our our staff would make sure that the actual design meets the intent of the type D buffer. Uh, City Council has the authority to place any additional conditions, uh, buffering or otherwise, that it sees fit. Uh, for example, if, if the city council felt that uh, a fence was appropriate in addition to the buffer, that would be an appropriate uh, condition um, in order to help mitigate any negative impact on the adjacent neighbors. With respect to uh, lighting, we do have lighting standards both in the zoning ordinance and the design guidelines. Those lighting standards um, uh, make sure that there is minimal spillover onto adjacent properties and ensures that lighting is directed uh, downward and not not outward towards adjacent properties. And to that end, we do require uh, lighting details, of proposed fixtures, the fixture locations, and we do, we do require a photometric plan to be submitted that uh, demonstrates the, the lighting amount that, uh, that is over the property line and which that is required to be one half foot candle or less and one half foot candle is really uh, pretty pretty negligible um, with respect to where um, 
the let me go back to the handy dandy I apologize it looks like mine got closed out but with respect to the location of the the house to the north uh, the house to the north is located here so it's relatively close to the front of the property uh, it would be closest to the parking that is at the front of the property so there's green space then parking and then the clubhouse and then the pool so the clubhouse structure itself and the pool would actually sit a little bit further back on the property in question than the house uh, to the north uh, but the house to the north would be closest to the front parking area in front of the clubhouse and I'll kind of give you an idea I'll pull the uh, concept plan back up again so here's the front parking area here and the house to the north is kind of in that area right there and there's the outline of the parcel to the north With respect to drainage, um, I may ask Mr. Huddleston if, uh, if he could address that, um, as he is much more of an expert on that topic than I am. Thank you, Mr. Blomley, Mayor, members of the council. Um, it'd be pretty routine for the design engineer to uh, address the drainage patterns and, and not increase uh, flow across the, the neighbors to the north. Uh, additionally, um, th there was a mention of a sinkhole, and that's uh, also something to be considered in the final site design uh, to deal with the consequences of that sinkhole. I, I do note that there is a drainage system in Veterans Parkway uh, that could serve as an outlet of their stormwater management pond, which will be required uh, part of their development. And so I would imagine that the impacts on the neighbor to the north from drainage w would be fairly minimal and it might be able to actually reduce the amount of drainage that, that discharges to the north um, by capturing it in a pond and directing it to Veterans Parkway. And I'd be glad to answer any other questions you might have on that, and Mr. Blomley would be available for, for any additional. I think one of the other things they asked about too was sinkholes. Yes, the sinkhole, um, Mr. Wade, uh, so it requires uh, would require an, an analysis of its actual impact on the design. Um, um, I, I, I didn't see specifically where that was, but uh, it is a, a, a very routine exercise for a de developer and their design engineer to repair and uh, remediate those uh, from a drainage standpoint and also from a construction standpoint so that the water is managed properly and the, the sinkhole repair could actually support some type of construction on it. Mr. Ellison, while you're up there, you may, uh, may need Mr. Blomley for this one, but there's, so the property that's to the north of the, you know, the kind of the eastern portion of this property that surrounds the home where the, the neighbors came and talked, yeah, I don't, on our maps in here, there's no kind of zoning or uh, what, what, do you know what it's zoned? That, that yeah, I think Mr. Blomley has a, 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 an update for you on that. And is that in the city? Yes, sir. Um, so that, pars that uh, wooded area is the balance of the Fellowship Bible tract. Fellowship Bible parcel. Gotcha. It's like that. And so the, the first phase of the development for Fellowship Bible Church is on the north end of, of that parcel, but the church owns that entire parcel. And that's actually who Mr. Swanson purchased the purple parcel from. And it's owned RS-15. I'm sorry, I forgot to answer the original question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and churches are permitted by special use permit from the Board of Zoning Appeals in the RS-15 zone, and they did acquire a special use permit for the church construction there. I know it's always a concern when, when you've got a sinkhole and you've got properties that have retained water in the past, and you go out there and a couple Saturdays ago when we were having some pretty heavy rainfall, 
Uh, I know General's Landing was one of those that everybody was concerned about the water flow and the water retention pond and stuff and, and the effect that it would have on the neighborhood and the neighbors right adjacent to it. And um, it, it, it's impressive sometimes when, when we go out and look what these engineers can design because uh, as I was looking at that property out there, not only was the property flowing extremely well across General's Landing and, and heading down to the retention pond, the water, water was being retained even though we'd had a ton of rain, and, but it wasn't spilling into the ditch way yet. And so it was being released at a very slow rate it, uh, which improved what was being released onto Thompson Lane. And in turn, it also, if you went a block or two away from the property, you could see where the water was then flowing towards that property and leaving the area much more, much more efficiently than it ever has in the past. So it, it, I, I get their concern and I understand their concern when you're talking about blocking off a sinkhole, but uh, you know, the engineers know how to mitigate those and, and handle those situations, and um, it, it actually can prove to be beneficial to both properties on either side if it's properly designed, so. Yeah, I, I agree with, with what Eddie's saying, and, and um, you know, the from a water standpoint, we really do have to rely on the professionals. Now, some of these other things I, I am curious about when we talk about the light spillover and that sort of thing. Certainly, that's gonna that's gonna be um, pretty measurable from what types of lights are fixed. You know, at, at the clubhouse, for example, the floodlights or the lights in the parking lot. But that doesn't necessarily address, or does it address? You know, cars coming in, and and maybe you can maybe you can tell us the you know. I, you know, when you guys say a type C 15 foot buffer, I know it's 15 feet. I have no idea what the, you know, the, all the intricacies of the type C versus a type D. Can you explain that to us as far as what would actually be in between and how much distance would be in between, you know, uh, the parking lot, the pool, the house? So, so uh, uh, the buffer, of course, when it's initially planted, um, it's not completely opaque. It takes years for it to mature. Um, however, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gunther did just uh, correct me and let me know that um, there will be a perimeter fence along the, uh, the north property line. Um, and so typically what we would, what we would ask to mitigate, um, to, mit to mitigate headlights, because headlights are generally lower to the ground than the other lighting that, that you mentioned, Mr. Lalance, uh, would be a fence to mitigate that impact. Gotcha. So that would, that would the, the fence would directly cut off the light um, because it would be tall enough to, uh, to block that light. And so anywhere that there's a parking lot, uh, we generally think it's a good idea to supplement with, with a privacy fence. Okay, one other question that I can think of right now, sorry. It, what kind of are there any kind of time frames um, this may be for mr. Swanson will there be any kind of time frames that we'd have to worry about mm -hmm. you know will people be in there using the pool 24 hours a day or will it be typically uh, mr. Gunther I, sorry that might be important at this point we hadn't discussed that with the developers to what they propose their hours to be for the clubhouse so we would have to confirm that What's, with mid -south what's, what's typical? Is, is typical typically? Hours? I, 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 what, what I'm used to seeing is that you know the pool usually closes at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's a typical time. I can't guarantee that that's what they're proposing, but I'd say that's a pretty typical. You know. I guess looking at the property, and I, and I rode by this property this afternoon and looked at the pigs' uh, property as well as the people to the south. Uh, by the way, y'all got a beautiful place and a beautiful house there. It, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's very attractive. And, and, and I, well, I looked at the property that we're talking about here, and I tried to imagine what is the best use for the property. And, of course, it, there's with the acreage that's there, with the current zoning, there's probably room for maybe six homes to go on that property. So 
it, uh, I, I tried to decide which I would rather see it developed as, six homes through there coming up with a street coming up the side, or, or, or with this clubhouse there that would have somewhat limited hours, I would, I would assume. Um, I think that there's, you know, I'm trying to weigh which would have the most impact on your home and, and your quality of life. And um, I, I, I've come to the decision that this is a, a pretty good proposal as long as it's managed right as far as the, the situation of uh, managing the water as, as well as mitigating the sinkhole and making sure that's taken care of. And, um, and of course, the, uh, the fact that it will be manicured much better with it being a, a, a planned development than it would be if it were just six individual homes. You, you, you'd, you'd have more consistency in the, the, the way the property is maintained. So, um, and, and it is a gated area, so um, I, I think the, the quality of the product that we're looking at here is, 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 is pretty high. And so, um, after reviewing it and looking at it uh, and trying to balance uh, what it could be today versus what's being proposed, I mean, I, I mean, there's nothing that's going to be as nice as having that open field next to your house. I can tell you that. But uh, but I do think, as far as a project, I think um, this I think this is something that uh, would would be attractive and. Uh, and well maintained over the years, so I, I think it's a good project. I, 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 I often wonder, you know, if if we're doing the right thing when we we put something other than a home next to residential homes like this. But in, in this particular case, it's on Veterans Parkway. Uh, it's not going to carry traffic constantly through there because it is gated on both the front and the back, as we discussed earlier. So I, I'm. Having reviewed it and thought about it, I mean, I, I'm, I've, I've grown to be somewhat comfortable with the, this proposal, and um, I, I really can't imagine what I would think would go on that property that would be better. And, and so that's the, that's the challenge for me. So I, I'm, I'm at the point that uh, I think it's uh, a doable project that would uh, have probably the least impact uh, of, of what could go there. Uh, at, with the way it's presented, I, and, and Mr. Swanson has a very good uh, history of developing a quality product. I mean, um, I know when we actually look at the plans and get down to the details of the, the exterior and the interior of the products and stuff like that, uh, it, it's generally really high, and uh, I've seen him in the past jump through hoops to try and accommodate neighbors as far as building walls and fences and stuff like that. So it, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with what he's trying to do there, and, and, and I think it'll be a good neighbor for you in the long run. I really do. I'll just add also, um, you know, I, I know this is not easy for anybody that's directly impacted by it, but one of the things we just did in this meeting is is turn the property in front of your homes into commercial uh, property as well. So I think part of what you're facing is the area around you is is inevitably going to change, whether that's this project or, or another project. Um, so I'm sympathetic to that, certainly, but with a, a you know, four lane median highway or road coming right through your front front yard. Um, I think it's I think it's inevitable that this is coming towards you. So um, I, I support the project as well. So you know the, the kind of the only thing that's that's that I'm still struggling with a little bit is the the, the time deal. Um, just from a standpoint of you know the pool is shifted back pretty good I mean it might be a little more comfortable it was all shifted back another 30 or 40 or 50 feet but I mean that's just not the way it's drawn up but it would definitely have an impact on me as far as being able to know I mean if it's going to be I just don't I'm not at apartment complexes at midnight so I don't have any idea if they're having if they're having parties pool parties at midnight at apartment complexes but if that's the case I'd be I'd be hard pressed even though 
there are a lot of advantages. I mean, the way we're going to get traffic flow out of there and all that kind of stuff is is absolutely compelling. And I think that the developer will do a good job here. But that's something I, you know, I, I'd really like to be able to know if if it was at all possible. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll 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 go on if it, that's not something we know. Hours of operation. We're going to have second, yeah, hours of operation. We'll have a, well, we have two readings. We have two readings, so that's something we could perhaps get answered by by second reading. Yeah, and we could we could have a revised pattern book by second reading addressing that concern, and then also um, uh, I think the language in the pattern book regarding the fence is is somewhat permissive, and I think Mr. Gunther and Mr. Swanson have made have made that that. Uh, a, a definite commitment and so we would want to see the pattern book revised to 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 make that a commitment as well so we can, we can definitely have those uh the pattern book revised for second reading is that fence on both north and south and could i could someone speak to why it's not shifted back a little bit is there some design reason that the it doesn't shift back the more you can shift that back the less impact it has on the property So if you see here in this diagram, the, the houses that are to the north and the south are actually, as uh, Mr. Bloma had pointed out, those are really adjacent to the open space that fronts off of Veterans Parkway. And then we have the clubhouse, um, which is designed in a residential style. And then the pool itself sits behind all that. So the pool is almost as far back on the parcel as we can get it. I I can. Mr. Shacklett, um, I believe we can um, blow this up to really give you a better idea of where the where the existing structures are in relation to. So see here is the outline of the house to the north. And this is the outline of the house to the south. during the winter months It'd just be the summer okay. <clears throat> and one thing that uh, that mr. Tucker did just point out to me and that I believe is relevant um, uh, the noise ordinance would also um, be in effect our city noise ordinance would apply to whatever activity is occurring on on this property and of course that's enforceable by the police department One last question, sorry, and then we're going to, I'm, I'm going to be good. The, the trees that I currently see on this map, it's sort of hard for me to tell, and I'm not exactly sure if anybody's capable of answering this on our staff, but it looks like with this satellite picture that there is going to be some, there are, there will be some trees that will stand on that north border that appear to be on the southern portion of the property owner to the north. I don't see that on the other one on the the, the property owner to the south. But um, does that seem correct? Am I looking at? Am I seeing that correctly? That's the buffer. Are you talking about existing no, trees no, or no, proposed no, no. trees? I'm talking about the satellite picture. Okay. Existing trees. You see up in here. See all that? Yeah. See, it's kind of. <clears throat> if you zoom in on that, it almost appears. Well, actually, I was zooming in on a different. 
I'm one of the fuzzy ones. All right, Mr. Lance, is that the, the view you're? Yeah, well, it's okay. E either way is fine, but if you zoom in on that, if you kind of look at the, just the north, yeah, right where your, finger, where, where your hand is right there, yeah, kind of right in that area, does it appear that there are some, are there some trees there? My, my, my question is, will there be trees that are on the adjacent property owner side that's actually going to be back there in between the building and the that property owner, it looks like there are. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to tell from this angle and sometimes the aerial photography kind of skews where, where things are located. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's difficult to tell. It, it looks like there, there is some tree cover on, on both lots, but um, where the trees are located in relation to the property line, I really couldn't say. Okay, that's cool. Is that over on Creek? Any other questions? <clears throat> If there are no other questions, I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. I'm going to uh, vote aye with the caveat that by second reading, I'd like to know if there are some hours that we can plug in um, before second reading, okay? Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into planning, uh, excuse me, rezoning approximately 24.2 acres along GDO 1 Medical Center Parkway. Mr. Palmley. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. Our next public hearing tonight is a rezoning request uh, for property located along the south side of Medical Center Parkway. It's the area in the hatched pattern um, labeled as GDO 1. That's its current zoning. Its zone, the base zoning is MU and the overlay zone is GDO1. Um, this is property that the, uh, the city and um, uh, Swanson Development recently um, resubdivided and um, drives, I believe, a property transfer has already taken place for a portion of, of the property. It has, yes. And, and the city and Swanson Development are joint applicants in requesting that, uh, that the area, the area uh, shown in the hatch pattern be rezoned um, from GDO 1 to GDO 3. And the main purpose for this rezoning request is because a, a, a there is a clause in the sales contract that the property has to be developed to GDO 3 standards, which means that it has to go before the DRC, which is an extra layer of scrutiny and uh, regulations. Of course, the DRC is our uh, kind of our, our architectural review board for property that um, was uh, city owned in the gateway. So we are, uh, uh, the city and Swanson are bringing a joint rezoning request to you uh, so that the zoning, the overlay zoning is GDO3 consistent with the requirements of the contract. The base zoning will remain uh, MU. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. The uh, planning commission conducted a public hearing on this matter and, uh, and uh, unanimously voted to recommend <coughs> approval of this request. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? This isn't. This is MU. It's not PRD. That's correct. It's currently zoned MU and GDO one right now. It's the. Uh, it's the majority of it is undeveloped. Um, the uh, the fire station is, I believe, the only fire station four. Four. Yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Big four. It's got a big four on it. Big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, very observant. <laughs> big. Got a big slide in it, too. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we need to conduct a public hearing uh, for this change. Anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We'll consider on first reading ordinance 18 OZ 72. Are there any concerns on this property with any of the earthworks or anything that may be from Civil War? I mean, I'm not trying to interfere with the progress of the property development, but I think there, I've had a couple of people contact me with concerns that perhaps there is some earthworks on this property that would at least need to be documented. I, I don't have any knowledge of that. I'm, I'm going to look towards Mr. Huddleston to see if that's something that, uh, that he is aware of. <laughs> <laughs> Sinkhole and earthwork specialist. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Councilman Smotherman, I think when the uh, city looked at this area in 1999 for the conference center, I, I think there were some identified earthworks uh, on, in this area on this property. Um, to what extent they, uh, they were completed, I think, uh, as I recall, they were uh, perhaps still under construction uh, and then the end of the Civil War, um, of course, and the, the relocation of the federal troops uh, probably brought that to a halt. Uh, but, but we do believe there's some remnants of earthworks uh, very near Med Center Parkway here. Um, to what extent they'd been investigated, I'm really not sure. This has been generally privately held property for some time um, and, uh, and certainly something that, uh, that the applicant may wish to, uh, to, to uh, have that reviewed and documented to see if there are any artifacts still there. Yeah, I, I think that would be a good idea just from a historical standpoint to at least acknowledge if there is any earthworks there and p potentially have it looked at to see if there's any remnants or anything that would uh, have any historical significance uh, to that area. So, I think there's some fairly well documented information through the uh, Stones River Battlefield in their office about the extent of uh, the, the earthworks in this area. <clears throat> And we'd be glad to share our uh, uh, information from our 1999-1998 er, era uh, assessment and survey. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I'm sorry. Let me make sure I got my hands around this. I got maps, satellites, everything here. And I still can't get my hands around just, this. Just let us know what else you need. 24 acres is the is not what we talked about. That's the property that just surrounds Station Four. That wasn't nearly 24 acres. You remember all that stuff that we went through that I'm talking about? The the, the whole PRD and nursing home or not nursing home and condo you, you remember all that how, how are we getting to 24 acres so some of this is land that mr swanson already owned so some of it is the city-owned property combined with some of the land that mr swanson already owned we've kind of reconfigured uh the parcel lines and and this this map predates the recording of the plat so it's it's difficult to to show you how it's configured now but uh it's kind of a conglomeration of both of of properties from both property owners. But that map right there, you see the part that says GDO1? Yes. I can tell it's some kind of different color than that next section over there that says MU. That section that says GDO1 in the middle of it, is that 24 acres? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Yeah. All that. All right. Thanks. I'm leaving the blind here. Any other questions? No. 
No, uh, excuse me. We already had the public hearing and we closed the public hearing. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Schlefflet. <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Smotherman. <laughs> Abstain. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, we'll move into Planning Commission recommendations to schedule public hearings. Thank you, Mayor McFarland. These are three public hearings that the Planning Commission held on January the 9th. Um, the Planning Commission was able to consider all three public hearings in one night, and we would recommend the same for the City Council. We would recommend a public hearing date for all three items of March the 21st. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. No question, move for approval. Second. Motion is second, Ms. Wright, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. All right, do we have any beer permits? We do. We have um, an ownership change at two locations for a grocery market that already has beer in place. We have a permit type change to a com combined retail type permit for a restaurant. And then we also have an ownership change for uh, a grocery market uh, already with beer on, on site. Uh, all of these still need to finish their license, I mean, I'm sorry, their um, building codes inspections. So if you approve these tonight, we still would not issue the permit until those uh, occupancy forms have been brought into us as approved. I'd be glad to try to answer any questions. I move for approval. <clears throat> we have a second. Second. Motion second, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. I have one recommendation for a pension committee um, replacement with Mr. Crumley leaving, um, recommending Aaron Tucker at, to serve on the pension committee. It's a little more complicated. Than, you have to have someone who has who actually is a, is a participant in the plan, which means we changed our plan in 2010. 10. So it has to be someone who has been here prior to 2010. So Miss Tucker capably fits that role. I think she's already gone. Um, so we could give her a 15 year term since she left if y'all want to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Teach people to leave early. I move for approval. Second. Motion is second. Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Skills Harris. Aye. Mr. Lalance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. I have one uh, introduction I want to do before we get to Mr. Griffith, who has, has come in. Uh, we have David Arthurton, who is here with Troop 441. Uh, he's with the, uh, from the Mars Hill Church of Christ in Christiana, and he's here with his dad, Larry. So, and I assume you're working on your uh, citizenship or your... All right. Well, we're glad that you're, uh, glad that you're here and appreciate you sitting through the meeting. So, uh, well done. Thank you. Good luck. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Griffith, we need to move back to item 19, property exchange agreement for the extension of West North, Northfield Boulevard. Thank you, Mayor, members of the uh, City Council. I do have for you tonight a uh, property exchange agreement with New Vision Baptist uh, Church, which is for the extension of West Northfield Boulevard. Uh, the city committed um, several months ago in our contract with Vanderbilt University Medical Center to the construction of Northfield from Garrison Drive to Thompson Lane. While most of that construction area occurs on land owned by the city, the project area near Thompson Lane is currently owned by New Vision and has been used for parking. 
Uh, details of the property exchange are included in the attached <coughs> agreement. In short, the exchange includes about one acre along Thompson Lane uh, that New Vision currently owns as primarily an improved parking lot for about three and a half acres uh, that is uh, currently owned by the city that's an unimproved lot. I've got an um, exhibit that's included with your, your information. Uh, a remnant of the of the adjacent right of way will become part of of an adjacent city owned track, so we'll be able to use all of it, uh, either as right of way or combine it with uh, current city property. Um, and then also, we will be required to uh, to purchase the uh, the construction easement easement in the amount of five thousand eight hundred fifteen dollars. With that, uh, we recommend approval. We'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Mr. Griffith? No questions. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. Vice Mayor Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. LaLance. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Shacklett. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Mr. Wade. Aye. Mayor McFarland. Aye. Thank you for uh, working around my tardiness. No, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Griffith. I, I want to say, you know, not many people understand how much time y'all put in on community meetings and how y'all handle things. And so, um, everyone who's sitting here you're at a lot of different things a lot of long hours at night we uh we appreciate that we appreciate you handling that meeting tonight any statements that need to be paid not tonight okay any other business uh one thing on scheduling um, <coughs> surveyed uh, uh staff and there's probably no need to meet next week um and so we won't have a meeting next thursday of a workshop on the 13th um, the week of the 19th is a short week because the president's week typically we don't meet on a short week but we'll probably need to have a meeting on the 21st and then I believe we have public hearings on the 28th no we'll see about the 28th to be determined but so no no meeting next week and then we'll do the workshop on the 13th and we'll have a couple items probably to take action on at that time I have one recommendation I wanted to get from the council if it was possible. Um, Mr. Tyndall and I have had a couple of meetings over the last couple of weeks with uh, County Mayor Ketron and in the paper they had talked about uh, putting a DMV, um, a county clerk's office out on the west side of town and had looked at the Blackman site. We met uh, earlier in the week and many of y'all know the DMV is a state-run agency and we put a renewal uh, center in the library a couple of years ago and that worked well but not many people realize that that's not a city-run facility and I know we get lots of input on people driving to Lebanon and Shelbyville uh, Bedford County to be able to get their licenses so we when that opportunity presented itself, we're building Station 11 already on uh, to the left of where our communication tower is on our property on Fortress. And we fought, felt like that it may be a good opportunity to partner with the county and look at putting that facility over close to the fire station. Uh, we even talked about a facility where city residents could go and pay their city taxes who live on the west side of town. Uh, we've talked about possibly a satellite library on that side of town but this seems like a good opportunity if the council would permit us to maybe talk about that with the with the county sure. shaking hands like it's worth exploring for sure yeah. all right sounds great all right any other business seeing none we'll stand adjourned <laughs>